Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. Today we're gonna to build a quick mandrel that will fit over some outer slide tubing that I have. This will allow me to buff and make a more even surface finish on certain parts of the trumpets than I was getting before. Let me show you how I made these. So first things up is adjusting where the compound is as well as tightening up these gib screws so that I can improve the surface finish on my parts, which is important for a mandrel because when we're going for a slip fit, we need the surface finish to be very well done. Here you can see the test part that I made last night. The one we'll make today will have the same basic design, but be a bit longer. You can see the small ridge at the end of this part. That's where the chuck will hold onto this part. And I've actually sanded that down to be a very small taper so that it will fit onto the end of the tubing well. And this is the round bar aluminum that we'll be making this new part from. It's got plenty of length to it, so I'll make sure to put this through the spindle bore and we'll only use what we need to off of it. Before I do the final tightening on these chuck jaws, I use the old part to help index where I want the total length of the mandrel portion of the new part to be. As is tradition, I set up for a facing cut, which will ensure that the end of this part is perpendicular to the axis of the chuck. And even though these will be pretty light passes, I did still apply some cutting fluid just to get in the good habit of it and to ensure the longevity of my tools. Now that that's done, I clear some chips off of the tool and reset the tool for facing cuts, which means that the tool tip needs to be perpendicular to the work that it will be cutting. So I face it off against the end of the part, which is now perpendicular to the chuck. Here I'm making a quick witness mark so that I can read my hand dial to get an accurate sense of how much material I'm taking off of each side as I go through these cutting processes. I wanna make sure that the work is clear of any grease or chips when I take this first measurement. This will be really important for me to get a sense of how much material I need to take off. I did buy this material as half inch round bar. So as you can see, it was shipped just a few thousandths over that. And I will be taking this down to this new measurement from this old mandrel of about 497 thousandths. Now that I know what I'm aiming for, I'm going to take a couple of very light passes here in order to see how well this new compound position is doing in terms of accuracy of cuts and surface finish. If you look closely at the work, you can see some of the original surface finish of the part as it was shipped to me. So because this was a very light pass, since we barely scratched the surface on that pass, I will take some heavier cuts here in order to get myself closer to that final dimension. I am still using the power feed at this point to help improve my surface finishes. From this angle, it does appear that I'm getting quite close to the chuck with the tool, but remember the video is sped up and I'm keeping a close eye to make sure I don't crash the tool. As you can see from this number, I am a little bit under my initial goal for 497 thousandths, but the part doesn't fit exactly how I want it at this point, so I'm going to take about another half thou off, which I achieve on this lathe by setting up for a spring pass. I use my calipers again to check the measurement, and it seems that we achieved our goal of taking that half thou off. At this point, I grab some of the tubing that I will be using this mandrel on to see how the fit is. There's no wiggle in the part and the slip is very nice. At this point, there's only a couple of steps left. So I grab a needle file to deburr the end of this part and this will help ensure that the mandrel fits properly into the slide tube without catching on anything. Using the sandpaper here really isn't removing any material, but it is improving the surface finish to help ensure the close fit that I'm going for between these parts. I use three different grits of sandpaper here and I finish it off with a scotch Bright pad, which leaves a finish that I like. The last step is to use this parting tool to 
remove the work from the rest of the bar of aluminum. And this tool is something that requires a bit of setup to ensure that it works properly. So I make sure that it is well within the turret and then I need to make sure that it is exactly uh, 90 degrees to the work, otherwise the tool won't work properly. So once that tool is set to that angle, all I need to do now is check the width of the jaws that I want to have activated here. So I grab my old test part from last night and I scribe that onto the new part very quickly. Then I move the parting tool back so that the edge, listen to the lathe as it stalls just a bit because I feed in the tool at too high of a rate. As soon as I hear that sound, I back the tool off immediately and apply some more cutting fluid. Throughout the rest of this parting process, I do apply the cutting oil fairly liberally to make sure that I don't uh, stall the lathe again. And Yahtzee. Make sure to check out Blondie Hacks on YouTube if you want to see where I stole that joke from. Links in the doobly-doo. As you can see, the parting tool doesn't totally clear the end of the part, and thus we need to remove that nibbon with another facing operation. So we've got to switch our tools again. As I chuck this up, I make sure not to hit the mandrel part of the work on the jaws, and I only use the end where the jaws will normally be touching to chuck it up with. This facing operation is very non-critical, so I just do it by hand, not really worrying about what the measurements are at this point. After I back the tool out of the way, I grab a flat needle file to just round off the edge very carefully as I am working very close to the chuck. Those are all the cuts that are required on the lathe, so now I will show you what this part looks like after a quick cleanup. The outer diameter of the longer portion of this mandrel now closely matches the inner diameter of our slide tube, which means that it won't fall off very easily, especially with the small lip that I created at the end. Now I'll show you one of the ways this tool will be used after I get this setup finished. When I bring up the tailstock, I make sure to lock the tailstock as well as the quill to help support the work better. Now I can apply a high quality brushed finish without having to worry about the tube collapsing when I go through the different grits of sandpaper and finishing off with a Scotch-Brite pad. I'll clean this off with my favorite not a sponsor goof off and now this is what that brushed finish looks like. So that's how I made that mandrel. While I was trying to hit a very specific dimension, I didn't feel comfortable hitting that on dimension with the tools from the lathe, so I approached it with some sandpaper to really get it into the slip fit that I wanted for that part. Anyway, if you want to be notified when I post more videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for stopping by the shop.